Welcome back. On this video, we'll be finishing this thing. Well, hopefully. Still need to finish the, uh, the catwalk area, the doors, vent windows, windshield, you know, minor things. So I'm gonna work on this hole today. I'm gonna have to, uh, well, I think I'm gonna attempt to make it in one piece, but I'm probably gonna have to do it in two pieces simply because I can't clamp it anywhere. Sort of a, not a very easy spot to access, but let's give it a try. So I come to my uh, favorite pattern making material here, my uh, post-it notepad. Um, give it myself a couple little patterns and get started. I'm thinking this is what I'm gonna, gonna do here. Two smaller pieces. My high level of arts and crafts. Just got my paper patterns made, so I think I'm gonna start with this one here. Get it welded and metal finished. And then uh, do the back one, because I'm hoping I can clamp it in the trunk area and so on. I don't quite have a long enough clamp to get from there to there, but I don't know, I'll figure out something. That is the greatest thing ever, by the way. If you ever have a chance to buy a shear, buy one. Probably should be wearing gloves, but uh... I lost all my uh, gloves from my left hand, so now I have a bunch of right-handed gloves, so I don't have a pair. Because that's just my life. I'll have to ream the edges. Uh, this thing is a, a handy little tool. I've had this thing for about 30 years. And uh, it just goes and cleans the edge up so you don't get that, uh, you know, that paper clip cut. Do -do -do -do. Look at that. Ooh, baby, look at that. No more sharp edges. Because that shear makes that metal like a razor. And that thing will uh, ruin your day, or my day. Nice. Well, I found some gloves. They don't match, but at least it's a left and a right. Yeah. Move that a little bit and start playing with it. Well, starting to get there. Something to work with. That was it. Number three inch wheel for the edge. I'm going to start with to break the edge a little bit. Getting closer. really where this pipe anvil is uh, super handy because uh, I've made a bunch of different dies for this thing over the years and uh, whenever you want to make something you've always got a nice little round or whatever bizarre shape that you know you come across and they uh, all become handy so this thing is great trying to uh, stay enthusiastic is a little rough it's uh, April 4th which means summer is officially here in Texas. 
Well, the rest of you are enjoying nice spring weather. Ours lasted about two weeks, which was nice, but now it's 95 degrees and so humid it's almost raining. Uh, almost hard to breathe. Sucking the life out of me. Well, at least it ain't snowing. A little more filing and it should be just about ready. So I just spent the last hour working on stuff, thinking I was recording the whole thing. But I had the settings on the GoPro wrong and instead of recording, I was taking pictures. So uh, I'll see what I, see what I, this is harder than it looks, believe it or not. But eh, whatever, it's all fun, right? So between screwing up filming, sweating like a farm animal, with a fair amount of cussing, I actually did manage to get this thing tacked in place. I used my MIG to uh, get everything tacked. I'll go ahead and clean that up and then burn it in with the TIG machine and work on that guy. But that'll be tomorrow because I'm hot. Standard 1 16th uh, tungsten and the 035 MIG wire. So, hopefully, should have a nice little fusion weld and hit it one shot and try to uh, just push through and get it done in one hit. Easier said than done. So looking at how this thing fits here, relatively straightforward this way. You can see it raises up here, so I need to make more metal in this area and then curve this area down. So I'm gonna focus on this area here stretching and rolling the rest out. Gonna cheat a little bit with the hammer here. Not too much. See, it starts to starts to form a little bit more. Now I'll just put it on the 12-inch English wheel and we'll see if we can smooth it out. Just using a small file here on the edge. Nothing too special. Just helps keep everything square. To hopefully get a better gap when I weld it. So one of the fun things about this car is it's actually been around for a long time. It was a low rider in the 60s, it's been to many shows apparently. Uh, spent some time in Southern California, Northern California. It's gotten around quite a bit. I don't know who's done any of the work on it, but uh, you poke around and you find some funny things like uh, this. You'll notice the quarter panel here is nice. But you go inside. I'll probably get the flashlight. Hold on. You go into the quarter panel here, and you'll see the old filler neck that they just apparently welded up and left there. Doesn't go anywhere anymore. So who knows what they have on that quarter panel. I'm sure 85 pounds of mud, but 
I don't know, maybe I'll cut that thing out. Looks like it was brazed in there too, so that's pretty awesome. Two days ago, it was 96 degrees. Today, it's 46 degrees and raining. Living in Texas is a lot like uh, living with the menopausal old woman. They're hot, they're cold, they're uncomfortable. It's generally hostile. Whatever, work continues. So reading some of the comments on the uh, interwebs, I'm not sure if it was YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or Yelp, I don't know, whatever. But somebody had pointed out uh, the reference to the back window versus the side windows. Now, prior to laying all this out, I had sort of anticipated making the back window a little bit smaller. Um, at the moment, I just laid it down to the point that I liked it. But uh, I don't have the door tops on right now, so it's a little hard to really get a whole feel. But uh, let me point it out. Using my handy yardstick, probably should get one of those wooden ones the teacher used to hit me with. But at the moment, this won't work. So if you look at the top of the window here versus the top of the door there. Now, I want them to be relatively in the same plane. Uh, so that way it looks like it's well it's supposed to be there. So I don't have the door tops at the moment, but once those go in, I'm thinking I'm gonna cut the top of the window and scoot it down maybe two inches. I'll leave the bottom where it's at, I like that. But essentially making the window two inches smaller. At least uh, that's what my general plan is, I don't know. I think I'll just sit here and sip my coffee and uh, think about it. So now that I've got this all welded in, I can pull all that bracing out of the inside and not worry about the car folded up like a taco. Um, so then I can get in here and start finishing out all the welds and get this back panel nice and smooth start the metal finishing process. Now, I've never really seen a great tutorial on how to properly metal finish. Um, I've worked with a few guys over the years that kind of give you some hints, but it, it seems to be like, like black magic, I don't know. But the theory is, is when you weld, the metal gets hot and it shrinks when it cools. So you have to get behind it, restretch the metal back out, and you typically do that with you know, a dolly and a hammer of some sort. Now you always want to have a huge selection of dollies and I've got a lot of them because you want to have one that matches the panel you're working on. But when you start, you want to get behind it, make sure there's nothing on the back side of that weld because if you're welding and you get like a blow through, you'll have little molten balls in there. Nobody wants molten balls in their weld. Get all that ground off and then you can start planishing out with the correct dolly and preferably a, a flat hammer get that a nice good uh good thrashing and then you can get behind it with a you know more of a flat dolly that fits and maybe like a, a spoon or even got these slapping files which i've never been a big fan of i think they cause more damage than they really help but it's sort of the old timer deal or i got different ones that i've made but uh, having a nice wide flat one helps to really plan shit out and not give you any you know hammer marks and sometimes when the metal gets really out of control or sucked up or whatever, I got a handheld sandbag and I might get up behind that with a wooden mallet or sometimes a plastic mallet to bring the weld and the metal back up to where I need it to be. Then I can start, you know, starting point with the, uh, the flatter dolly and, you know, whatever hammer I'm going to be using. It's definitely a, a lengthy process. And this is where the importance of fitting your metal correctly and as tightly as possible is so important because the better the fit, the cooler the weld, the less warpage, and ultimately the less time you have trying to fix things afterwards. Um, it's definitely trial and error and uh, it's you know not as easy as it looks, but it's not black magic, I guess. So if you happen to have a handheld planishing hammer, that definitely makes things much easier. It's like the cheat code on Super Mario Brothers. Makes things much, much easier. You can planish all your welds out, straighten the panel out all in one shot. Uh, I have a homemade one that I made some years ago, but I can't fit it in this area because there's too many braces in the way, so I have to do all this by hand. Um, 
I've got some different ideas of making a handheld one, like a pneumatic one that I'm gonna maybe play with. But, you know, we'll get it done. Better get all the bracing out. I'm gonna get those doors going. Well, I managed to get all the bracing back out. Um, so I figure I'm gonna start on the door tops today. It's cold and raining, so I don't feel like doing too much, so it might be a little bit lazy. So the tops themselves, I'm gonna to have to trim four inches, well, roughly four inches on each side. I'm actually gonna start at about three inches and work my way up into it. Uh, despite the uh, car having four inches taken out, it doesn't necessarily transcend to the door tops uh, exactly the same. I'm gonna to have to cut it here in half and lengthen everything and then refit it. So working on the door here, I'm going to make a plywood pattern using the inner structure. Or the garnish molding, I guess you'd call it. So it's got about a half inch gap there. So I'm going to use this to make a half inch plywood buck. That way I can piece everything together as needed. Using this as a guide, I'll put this thing here in my plywood here and I'll just trace around the outside, trim it out, and then start to compensate uh, for the chop. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do that yet, but we'll work through it. So I just traced along the inside, which fits the door perfectly, and then uh, I made marks on the molding where I cut it at the door and measured up the same amount that I cut off minus a quarter of an inch. That way I got room to clean it up and make it tight. I did that in the front and back. Then it's just a matter of sliding this down so those lines meet back up and then that should be at least the beginning of my pattern. I still have to split this in half but it'll get there. Now one of the reasons that you always want to cut what you take out shorter than what you started with, you know, in terms of the, the B pillars. So this area here is four inches, but if I actually slide it down to line that up, it's actually only three inches. So it theoretically is only a three inch chop, even though it's four out of the pillar. It's all about that math. So after taking a ride through the bandsaw and a little cleanup on the sander, this is uh, what I got. You can see it's actually almost symmetrical front to back, which is what we were going for. Now it gives me something to uh, clamp the door to and uh, straighten it out as I'm doing the door and the garnish. Um, may have to trim a little bit, but I think uh, it's a good start. So I need to trim the doors. So important thing to do is find out where the best place to cut is. So I want to make sure that everything is square and even, and preferably the straightest spot of the door, which just so happens to be the direct center, which surprise. But anyways, uh, I'll get that cut. And also over here, on my wooden pattern, which is why this is actually really helpful to use one, is I can take and mark where my current cuts are, you know, front and back, and pull this out, and then take the door top, after I split it and line it up, and then I'll know where to cut based on my pattern, which should make this whole process easier. Well, we'll see anyway. Look at all these different ribs and everything that I gotta cut and match back up. That should make it uh, interesting. This is for the door gasket to sit on. Try to 
and make that thing as square as possible might be a little bit of a challenge. Especially uh, for my uh, not so smart self. So I strip the paint off of here, and you'll see that is uh, that's lead. Everywhere I've touched in this car is covered with lead, and uh, mind you, that's all that's all factory stuff. Uh, that would be hence the term lead sled, or uh, something like that. And I don't know. It's better than Bondo, so I can't complain. But I got to get rid of all of it because it will uh, it doesn't weld very well, is what I find. So. I'll grind all that out and or melt it off or set fire. I don't know, I'll do something. So using my wooden pattern here, put the door tops on, we can see how much we need to stretch it here. So that's a, I can clamp to that, make that piece. Then also where I made the marks uh, that I transferred from the door itself, now I can transfer that to the door tops and hopefully have a pretty tight uh, fit. At least it gives me a good starting point and I'll trim it from that point, but uh, gotta start someplace. Um, this GoPro thing ain't so good. I have screwed up every single video I've taken on this thing. So I'm gonna have to do reenacting. Fuck. This is a lot harder than it looks, believe it or not. There's a lot of effort that goes into shoot a stupid video. For God's sakes, whatever. Well, after getting the door frame trimmed and my uh, buck trimmed, it's just just about where I want it. But uh, this is the reason to make a buck, because it now gives you something nice to hold everything together and clamp it while you do the welding and whatnot. So just about there. Got a little more farther along here. Got the front pillar trimmed and lined up in square. So now they got the door frame clamped to the plywood. I can start building this here. I got to trim for this gap because it does change when it comes down. So I'm just gonna trim that back and then weld a little piece of rod in there. Then. Uh, Right here, you see a little difference between the thicknesses here. So I'm gonna cut a slice there, pull that piece over, and then roll this back in and re-weld it, and that should line everything up. Moving right along here, got the front and door frame welded back on and trimmed out. I have a clamped a straight edge on here, so that way it aligns everything, so I can extend that uh, gap there but everything lines up so far door opens and closes nice and start filling that gap there I'm not sure what the story is with that lead but it smells like an outhouse when you melt it uh, so yeah that's nice uh, a little bit of damage there uh, as far as I know, that's actually probably factory, so I might be able to dolly that out before I uh, weld that piece in there. It's always a nice find. Every time I do one of these, I think, hey, maybe I'll get lucky and I can reuse that piece that I cut off the door and slide it in the spot that fits, and it's exactly the right size. Unfortunately, it is curved both of them, which makes them utterly useless. Wah, wah, wah. Every time I use this brake, it just really shows me how inadequate it really is. Um, this is just, I mean, a hair too big. I need to be about an eighth inch smaller. Um, I have to figure out how to work around that. This is where the genius of the pipe anvil really pays off. 
So I need to bend this piece and roll it up. So I'm thinking I can do it in here. Gives me something to work with. That's getting closer because I'm trying to make, trying to make that profile. So it actually is pretty darn close. So after uh, monkeying around a little bit here, I mean, that is almost a perfect profile for what I need. And that was all done with nothing more than that pipe anvil. So that is the first piece, which we'll do the inside. I'll trim it to fit better. Um, so then I gotta figure out how to make this weird ass wonky thing. I don't know. So to make this thing even more complex, I mean, really, why not? You've got, you've got a 90 degree bend there, then it dips down, then it comes back up, and then it goes down again, and then finally over here and folds over. Um, <laughs> I don't really know how to make this one piece. It's gonna be a challenge. So I got the first piece bent into a 90, and stuck in my vise here. No, I think. Take that first bend. Move it up just a smidge. Ah, there we go. That first bend I need. Hopefully it's right. So next, went into the break and bent that line up. Getting close. Getting closer. That bend was uh, it was real hard to do. It does not fit in my piece of junk break, so I had to use it on my vice. Uh, actually got that. Surprised myself, actually. Sometimes my super genius is uh, impressive to even myself. I mean, really, my mother always told me I'd be on TV eventually. She, of course, met America's Most Wanted, but hey, this'll do. So working through all these pieces here, got this piece fabricated. Got this piece welded in, and it actually fits surprisingly well. I just need to straighten everything out and grind it, and hopefully this door will be just about done. Because I am running out of time. I've got uh, about 10 days before the Lone Star Roundup, and I gotta take that thing, and I had to get my 40 ready to go. So it's an uphill battle from here. Some late nights are gonna happen. Still working on that door. I did get the rain gutter on, though. I wasn't gonna use it, but I didn't like this gap here, so I went ahead and put that back on there, which, of course, I had extended all that stuff, but uh, it's almost getting there. So I'm getting a little smarter on the driver's door here. Since I discovered there was lead, I went ahead and melted the lead out first. There's actually a factory seam there. They made this, this door top out of two pieces and then seamed it together there and leaded it. So I'm gonna cut it right in the center of that seam, finish that out, and that's where I'll extend it. Should have uh, easier results anyhow. Uh, and this thing looks badass with the doors on there. Oh, so nice. Just nibbling on this thing a little bit of time. Eighth inch and eighth inch, just so I can get it nice and snug and tight. It's almost there. It's really much better to go slow and take your time and file it all the way in as opposed it is to try to make metal and put it back that you screwed up. Using that wooden buck makes everything a hell of a lot easier. Almost. There, maybe another eighth of an inch and I think we'll be good on that one. 
What are you doing? Oh, puppy dog. Let's see what type of refreshing beverages we have. Oh, nothing. Come on, let's go to work. <clears throat> so per usual, my brake is totally inaccurate. Can't make that line there. So we come over here to the uh, pipe anvil. Drop it in there, give it a little tweak. Now we can finish it off. That thing is so useful to me. It's getting there. So I got both doors done. Kind of starting on the garnish moldings here. This one, of course, doesn't close right, but I'll have to take care of that. But uh, need uh, I got the drip rails back on, which uh, really wasn't sure I was going to use, but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and keep those on. Um, still got to put the glass in, but I'm going to start metal finishing everything now to the point where we can drive this thing. Uh, we need to get to Lone Star Roundup in about eight days, and uh, this thing needs to be there. So, currently having the windshield cut for it. As soon as I get that vat back, I'll put it in and uh, get some primer on this thing, hopefully by the end of the week, and uh, this thing will be on the road. Not a minute too soon, by the way. Works like a champ. Smooths it out real nice. Now to finish the car. Another thing that's cool with this thing is it's really small, so you can get it in those places. Like right here, it's all sucked down so I can get up inside with the dolly and bring that up. That uh, is not something you can do with a hammer very well. So I'm still working through the metal finishing here. Going to throw a little uh, dicom on there. Uh, no offense to the ladies, but a little, little blue contrast. This stuff smells like I need to put it in a plastic bag and sit in my car behind the high school. But uh, this will leave a nice contrast where I can sand it and then figure out where all the highs and lows are and start working all, all this through and get it all done. Get it with a little hunter grit. And uh, it's lumpier than a stripper's ass, but uh, it'll work. We'll get there. So a little hammer, dolly, grind, rinse, run through a spin cycle, and repeat. And I think we're just about ready to uh, just throw a little filler on it and block it out and primer it and be done. So I was up until the wee hours. 
metal finishing this thing with the hammer and dolly until I pissed off everybody in the neighborhood and had to stop. Woke up this morning, came out here and skimmed it out and started blocking it. And then my rotator cuff decided that I was no longer a body guy. So I had to give that up. So that's what you call uh, the paint and guy, body guy's problem. But got a little primer on it and hosed it off and uh, I could just look at this thing all day because damn it, it's a beautiful car. I mean, I'm not saying I'm that good, but well, let's just admit it. It's pretty fucking good. So, time for garnish moldings. Well, time to sneak in some of the garnish moldings. I need to get the windshield mounted. So, let's start with the windshield here. Nothing too special about here. It's going to take the same amount out of here that we took out of the A-pillar and bada bing, it should be just about done. As you can see, there's a slight difference in sizes. This one's fit and ready to go, passenger side. Now I move on to the driver's side. Also the center strip, that I was actually lucky and was just able to just trim the end off. So that's a uh, great. Also, the piece that you cut out of here, definitely want to keep because that will be used as a filler for the door when I do that one. So I got the garnish molding fit. You'll see I have the big gap there. I was hoping to use the piece off of the windshield, but I remembered that I had the quarter windows that I wasn't going to use, and they are actually perfect, so I'm going to steal that center section. Actually, I'll probably steal this piece here with the hole in it, the screw. Easy money, baby. Easy money. Well, I got the windshield in. I would have filmed it, but it took three hours. I didn't think you would have got bored. Uh, definitely not the uh, easiest windshield to put in, but eh, what are you going to do? 